So I want to do a quick recap of setbacks, how pressed characters accumulated their setbacks. And uh, there's always that initial decision and then the sort of continuation uh, of, um, you know, kind of navigating the setback and then what the end result looks like. So this is just going to be a quick recap and then we're going to get into applying the seven stages of setback to help you understand uh, each character and how uh, the movie really develops the characters uh, without necessarily applying setback, but revealing setback. So Brian Parker's setback. First, he loses his, his, his job. And then the most important aspect of his setback is that he does not tell his wife. And that losing his job is a normal thing that can that anyone can do. It's not his fault that he lost his job. But the fact that he couldn't he didn't feel like he could tell his wife is something that is very telling. And then also when when given the opportunity to um, talk to her over the phone, and uh, and then he talked to her he talks to her over the phone about twice, one at the beginning of the movie and the other at the end, he still doesn't tell his wife. So that's something. He detours and visits a bar which connects him to, to Jimmy. So he's, he's he's getting himself on a different path. Already, He's already in a setback. And so now he's continuing his setback by visiting a bar. He's forced to take money out of his financial portfolio. So usually you wouldn't want to take money out if you are investing in. So that creates a financial setback for him. The job alone is already going to create a financial setback, but I feel like that's more along the lines of economic. Having to take money out of the financial portfolio is much more um, pressing based on the movie's title because that is a cushion so that it allows you to, uh, knowing that it's there, allows you to continue to look for work, uh, but having to take it out affects your thinking about how long you can look for work and what other avenues you should, you could choose. So uh, Brian gambles with the $500 out of curiosity, uh, the 500 that Jimmy turns into a uh, 5,000. Then he gambles with his cash from the fi financial portfolio, giving over $100,000 to a person and or system that he, that he is not familiar with. Remember, Brian is familiar with the system of work. He's not familiar with the conning system and he is familiar with the system of sales and not drug dealing. And then he kills and buries Jimmy, takes the teens hostage, makes a choice to contribute to Jesse's setback. And uh, and we know that Jesse must assume Jimmy's role. And I and, and I feel like he contributes or maybe even originates, you know, Jesse's setback in terms of him having to become a drug dealer now in place of Jimmy, because as I noted, he spent more time with Jimmy. I mean, he, he spent more time with Jesse in the room. And so if, if anything, he should see himself in Jesse. And why doesn't he really want to save himself through Jesse? Instead, he would rather save Sammy, uh, who has initiated all of this in a sense, right? And uh, he's the rich kid. And maybe he's thinking of his own kid, uh, who's, who's also a rich kid. But his kid is about to become uh, a poor kid like he was when he was sitting in the car and the father was looking at the bankruptcy court information. So I just thought, I thought that was very interesting that he now contributes to this part of Jesse's life and setback. Jesse created his own setback in Jack and Cars, but I feel that Brian is contributing to, uh, to, to, uh, to Jesse's setback and not choosing Jesse to save. Brian thus dies in setback. We don't see him dead, but we hear the gunshot and we have to assume that the drug dealer is true to his word. So these are just the uh, accumulation of setbacks uh, concerning Brian's character. So the two teen setbacks, so we have Jesse McAllister and then Sammy, and it's funny that we don't really get Sammy's last name. Jesse, to me, is born into setback because I don't feel like he had a choice. There isn't a narrative that basically suggests that, the, uh, that his parents were together and they divorced, and then uh, one of the parents who... It, 
is the child custodian had to take the child and 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 they ended up in a bad neighborhood or something like that. So we just have to assume that Jesse is born into setback because we don't see his mother working. He Jackson steals cars, I guess, mainly for ego reason, and he has no plan no plan for leaving. He wants to leave and leave clean um, before the city flatlines, but he has no plan. And anytime you want to create an opportunity to implement an action, but you don't create a plan to do so, you have already created a setback or you will run into a setback. And then he burns the college brochure. So he burns any sort of uh, hope of himself of becoming something different. Why would, why does he continue to choose the life of Jack and cars over going to college, right? So that creates a setback. He follows Sammy. And, and we really think that Jesse is the one who has the power in their relationship, but it's really Sammy. And even when they are returning to uh, Jesse's uh, house, it is uh, Sammy. And I didn't notice that until I re-listened. It's Sammy holding the briefcase. And then it is Sammy holding the cash in Jesse's room. And so really, in, in some ways, Jesse is following Sammy because in, in some ways, I wonder if he wants to be where Jesse, where Sammy is in terms of having two parents at the home, rich, right? But I feel like it's really Jesse who follows Sammy. And we know this to be true in the end because Sammy is the one who basically says, let's go get another car uh, because you're leaving, right? And I feel like that was really him trying to keep him there. Uh, Sammy trying to keep Jesse there and Jesse followed Sammy. If, if Jesse was true, uh, really true uh, about wanting to leave clean, he wouldn't have followed Sammy. So Jesse involuntarily becomes a drug dealer. So he basically has no other choice. Brian is giving that choice to Jesse. Brian in, in, in his last moments of life has the power and he's assigning Jesse to become the drug dealer. And then this leaves Jesse living in perpetual setback, which will require him to blood out if he ever wanted to get out of this business, out of this hierarchy of, hierarchy of drug dealing. So Sammy is born rich. That's a major contrast, right? Uh, of course, we don't have his narrative, but we do have Jesse sort of mocking Sammy because he is rich. So we have to assume that he was born rich or born into a rich uh, environment. Sammy criticizes Jesse for jacking and stealing cars, but gets into the car. So we look at Sammy's character as possibly the moral uh, factor in, in, in decision making, but he's really no different than Jesse uh, in terms of, make, of, of criticizing something, but really wanting to do it because he could easily leave. He don't have to get in the car. If Jesse is going down the wrong way, and, and I understand Sammy is trying to pull at Jesse to make better decisions, well, then Sammy needs to think about that for himself, that he needs to make better decisions, right? Sammy Jackson steals a car one last time for Jesse, and as I noted, that I think it was really to keep him from going, um, but, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's exercising some fake power in a situation when really Sam, uh, it is Sammy who holds holds the power. Sammy does not fix the setback, but instead, cho but instead chooses to steal the money. So remember, the car that they stole with the $100,000 in it got a flat tire. And Sammy was wanting to try to fix the tire, which is essentially trying to fix the setback. But then when he no, when he discovers the money, that desire, that goal to try to fix the setback goes out the window and he takes the money and they walk away and, and they begin spending it as if they earned it. And then Jesse gets to leave in the end, but lives with the memory of Jesse in, set, in setback. So we, Sammy, um, oh, I'm sorry, Sammy gets to leave, but lives with the memory of Jesse in setback. So while um, Sammy continues to put up flyers, he's, he's, he's constantly reminded of what happened and what happened to his friend and not knowing where his friend is. So, so again, Sammy gets to leave, but lives with the memory of Jesse in setback, which, which places, honestly, Sammy in a mental setback 
possibly for the rest of his life, which contributes to his perpetual setback. So the drug dealer set back. So we have Jimmy says he's the owner of the bar, but he does not operate like an owner of a bar. And that's by sort of like a just an interpretation based upon his engagement with Brian, right? Jimmy needs Brian's investment to engage a drug dealer, right? Um, and, you know, I made the point that if he knows, if he is such a boss, why doesn't he have his own investment? And I often wonder when I look at the ideal about Jimmy retrieving the bag with the drugs, uh, what was that really all about? I still don't have a sound answer. I often wonder if Jimmy might have stolen those drugs or something like that because they were packaged the same way in that airplane uh, hangar. So I just wonder about that. Jimmy loses the money and uses a gun as a solution to his problem. So to me, this must be his habit. Uh, he wasn't all that handy with the gun. It wasn't like he seemed like he was very experienced with the gun, but he used, But I think that he gets himself into stuff, just like Jesse talks about getting himself into things. He gets himself into things and then uh, ends up having to lie and create these different opportunities, right, to get himself out. And basically... Um, um, sort of interested in shooting himself out. But I think that he's, again, a fake wannabe. You know, I think he's a wannabe drug dealer, a wannabe big man, a wannabe. He's not the drug dealer that, he's not the focused, uh, uh, confident drug dealer that you see on the plane. We don't know his name, but Jimmy is not the drug dealer on the plane. And then Jimmy basically dies in setback. So his narrative ends early enough and so uh the other narratives you kind of take over the drug dealer on the plane so he feels like brian has made a fool of him when it was jimmy he had to deal with and i wonder too if 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 jimmy really had a deal with him it, it, it just seems just seemed kind of odd that relationship the drug dealer had with jimmy but the drug dealer feels like brian has made a fool of him so he's sort of pushing at the wrong target he's um, targeting, he's targeting his anger at the wrong person. Drug dealer saves face by offering a three-part choice. So remember, uh, one of them had to replace Jim. One of them was going to leave, can leave. One of them had to replace Jimmy and one was going to die. And so, uh, which is kind of interesting though, that he was, you know, you would think that he was in a powerful position in offering that three-part choice. And again, he works like like God, an omniscient uh, type figure, right? That I'm going to give you the choice to make the choice, right? It's interesting, though, he wasn't willing to kill all three. So in leaving Brian with the choice, it was almost like he really wasn't willing to kill the two kids. And he was hoping Brian would be the one to make that decision for him. Because if he was a true true violent drug dealer who really doesn't care and wanted to save face he would have killed all of them why didn't he kill all of them right the drug dealer shoots brian so it basically brian no longer brian basically dies in setback he no, he can no longer um go through you know, a correction period, a recovery period, a res restoration period, or advanced period, Brian essentially dies in setback. So he, he, he can't go back and try to uh, tell his wife what really happened and how everything uh, transpired. He will never get that chance again. Same thing as Jimmy. The drug dealer maintains appearances of being a strong man, right? And then he perpetuates his own setback. So however the drug dealer started, and which is, if he was presenting a choice for one person to replace another, it's likely that he had to do the same when, when he was in his younger years. And he probably was, you know, he's probably also, um, what's his name? Jesse, you know, wanting to, coming from a um, economically depressed situation, wanting to leave the city clean, uh, clean, trying to leave and then getting uh, involved in another type of situation that led him down the drug dealing path. So as a drug dealer, whether he's a low level drug dealer or a high level drug dealer, he perpetuates his own setback uh, because he's going to now take Jesse and turn him into Jimmy, who was a drug dealer. 
and continue the drug dealing life. So these are the um, the other setbacks. So now that we have gone through a full film analysis of press, I want to now try to apply the seven stages of setback. Remember that comes from my book title, Overcoming Setback. And so I want to look at the definitions and what the stages suggest for Brian, Jesse and Sammy, and Jimmy. Jimmy is the drug dealer, but don't forget that there's this shadow drug dealer in the um, in the head drug dealer who was in the plane. So we're sort of looking at him too. So recap the seven stages of setback. Remember, missed opportunity, punishment, pain, correction, recovery, restoration, and advance. And we're going to get into the definitions and then try to apply the uh, each stage to each character. So for missed opportunity, missed opportunity is to miss something. To miss something is to fail to notice, hear, or understand something that was crucial for you to know. What opportunities did Brian, Jesse, and Sammy, and Jimmy miss? Let me read that again. So to miss something is to fail to notice, hear, or understand something that was crucial for you to know. What opportunities did Brian, Jesse, and Sammy, and Jimmy miss? So if we look at Brian, the main opportunity that he missed was just basically going home. Going home, he could have avoided all of the temptations that came after the decision to not go home and tell his wife. Uh, she she might have given him a new way of looking at things. She might have been upset, uh, but you can't be really upset with someone who lost her job due to job cuts, right? So she might have been sympathetic. She might have held him. So somewhere he didn't trust his wife to be there for him. I understand that people are afraid in terms of ego reasons why they don't want to go in and tell their partners or whatever. But there were times that he could have told, he could have told her from a distance while he was on the phone, sitting in the car um, a, um, a little ways from the house. You may not want to go straight in and tell her and face her, you know, face to face, but he could have told her in the car. There are many ways that he could have told her, uh, but that was that was essentially his missed opportunity. It, there was an inherent instruction um, in the situation, in this setback, because to overcome setback, you're going to have to go through correction and correction is a form of instruction. So you need instruction to move you forward um, throughout the process. And that the inherent instruction with Brian was essentially go home because you have a home, go home. And so you don't need anybody really to tell you that because you don't have anywhere else to go in terms of a job situation. So you go home. So that was his missed opportunity. Jesse and Sammy are uh, interesting. So their missed opportunity, Jesse, I feel uh, his missed opportunity is not necessarily leaving clean. I feel that when he burned the community college brochure, that's his missed opportunity. It's a little ways into the movie, but that would have been the next step. And you could argue that his missed opportunity also, when he is discussing um, you know, high school with Brian in the kids room, that it, implicit in that discussion is he didn't finish. So inherent, the missed opportunity is to finish high school. That's obvious. Finish high school, right? And then the next missed opportunity is to go to community college. So if Jesse didn't want to finish school and he didn't want to attend community college, then the next thing would he should have done was go to technical school or something like that and get a skill. But that's basically his missed opportunity, not listening to the uh, fact that uh, he needs to do something with his life. And that Sammy comes along and says, you know, when Jesse says he wants to leave, okay, that's not a plan, right? So then we look at Sammy and his missed opportunity. Sammy, Sammy's missed opportunity to me is continually getting in the car, not listening to his own conscious about Jack um, about Jesse jacking cars that if you are so bothered by Jesse jacking cars why do you continue to get in the car 
Jesse is going down the wrong road. He's going down the wrong path. And when you get in the car, you are co-signing what Jesse is doing. So Sammy's missed opportunity in my in, in my um, in my interpretation is that is that he's just ignoring his own conscience. He's just completely he he. It's almost like he makes a point of trying to make a point, but he knows he's not going to follow through. And um, and in those um, times, he it almost seemed like. Sammy believes that Jesse holds all the power in the relationship, but as we noted throughout the um, film analysis, when Sammy is holding the money, uh, Sammy is the one who really holds all the power in the relationship because is after all, it's Sammy who gets Jesse into the jacking of a of that last card that turns out to be the wrong card with money in it and turns out to be from the wrong person. So Sammy is just basically ignoring his own conscience. Jimmy, I think, is a liar. And I think he doesn't understand that he's a liar. And that I truly believe that wasn't his bar because he never went into an office. He never acted like he ran, like like he owned the bar. You know, bosses talk to bosses. That's why I think with Brian, Brian should have been able to recognize the liar in, in Jimmy because bosses should be able to recognize bosses. Um, no, Brian was not the CEO of the company, but he was the director of sales, which means he had people under him that he supervised, he managed, he directed. And so then why didn't you see Jimmy doing the same thing? So Jimmy, to me, failed to notice uh, that he is not what he what he's trying to make himself out to be. I think he's a wannabe drug dealer. I think he's a wannabe boss. I think he's a wannabe major player in this whole drug dealer hierarchy and it would have been better for him to act like what he really is which was staff and then you build from there don't try to be something that you are not so that's what i think about those characters in terms of missed opportunity punishment so the purpose of punishment is to address negative and or bad behavior to punish is to inflict a penalty discipline and correction so what was the punishment for brian Jesse and Sammy, and then Jimmy. So the immediate punishment for Brian, it uh, punishment de depends on the uh, decision making. So um, you could say that Brian was punished uh, in losing his job, but that's kind of like a general punishment that applies to everybody. But when he comes into the bar, and he engages uh, Jimmy, we don't really see punishment there. It isn't until he gives over the money and that um, the punishment is uh, that money being stolen or not being used the way it was supposed to be used. This is kind of a hard one because Brian is really punished at the end of the movie. So then you have to wonder, does he really go through the whole stages of setback, right? From, uh, from setback to comeback? Because his punishment comes at the end. But if we look at, say, giving over the money to Jimmy, and then Jimmy ended up losing the money, it's like, morality or something is punishing you, you know, you know, uh, rules are punishing you or whatever your mother used to tell you about doing wrong is kind of punishing you, but it's not an immediate punishment, right? But it's sort of like a punishment. Um, Jesse and Sammy are interesting because um, they are not necessarily immediately punished, but when they steal the car with the money in it and, and the car is um gets a flat tire you could say that might be their punishment it's like society you, you get into something and and you do wrong right you get that immediate punishment uh but if you look at jesse's you know decision to fight uh the man who was uh trying to hurt his mom and and the man throws him across the room 
uh, that could be a punishment for going for uh, for coming between two adults, right? But if you look at the punishment from stealing the car, and then because uh, he hadn't had any punishment leading up to that, um, he was able to jack cars for a long time without actually being caught. And in some regards, they were not really caught until basically the end of the movie when um, um, the drug dealer has them all come in and they're sitting in the actual uh, plane. So then if you look at it from that frame, um, Jesse is punished in terms of he's now having to become Jimmy. He's going to now become the new drug dealer. And then the pain of that would be him having to live life not clean, right? And then you kind of go through the rest of the uh, stages of setback. Sammy is punished um, Sammy's punishment he doesn't he's there isn't any Sammy gets off so Sammy's negative and bad behavior uh, instigating the last carjacking and then they're all in the plane but he gets to leave his negative bad behavior is not really addressed because he gets to leave. But if you look at the fact that he can't leave with his friend, that could be the penalty. That could be something that he remembers, you know, discipline. And he, the friend that he grew up with all these years, he can't have that friend anymore. If Sammy can no longer have his friendship with Jesse, that is the ultimate punishment for him. Now, how he begins to address his own negative and or bad behavior will depend upon um, his own ego, you know, his, his own anger, his, his own bitterness, right? He would have to, you know, self-reflect because remember, he's, he's, he was the last instigator. And uh, even though Jesse was the one who got him into a lot of things in terms of, terms of just carjacking and stealing, he still took the initiative to start his own carjacking. So you have to wonder uh, if Sammy is going to continue in that uh, tradition, you know, in a sense. Then we have Jimmy. And Jimmy's bad behavior is constantly rewarded until it's no longer rewarded. That his, his behavior uh, of sort of conning people uh, comes to a head when he when he does that last con and the last con is with Brian and um, They end up fighting and then Jimmy ends ends up dying. So that is his punishment. He couldn't go back He couldn't go through the rest of the stages of um, of setback from setback to to advance uh, from missed opportunity to advance he couldn't he's not going to be able to go through the rest of the stages because he's dead and that's what happens sometimes with people when they are in setback they they don't recognize where they are and the implications of it and that you can die in your setback you can die in the uh, punishment phase of your setback how many people die in correction die in um in prison you know correctional facilities so there's a possibility that you may never overcome because once you are dead that ends the sort of overcoming setback process. So punishment, you know, addressing negative and or bad behavior. So then we have pain. The pain reminds you that you have done something wrong. You have made the wrong move and you need to undergo a process to let the pain ride itself out until the fever breaks. So what pain did Brian, Jesse and Sammy and Jimmy feel and or endure? So if you're looking at the idea that pain reminds you that you have done something wrong, you have made the wrong move, you have to actually believe that though. Brian doesn't believe that taking that $100,000 and giving it to somebody that he doesn't know, to people he don't know, uh, he doesn't feel the pain of that. He doesn't feel the pain of it. Because if, 
if he felt the pain of it, uh, um, you sort of live with the pain and think about it before you actually do it. And so he did. He he does it in a whim. Um, he only feels pain, true pain, when there's a threat to his livelihood. That's what I think, because everything is kind of like a dulling of his personality, a, a dulling of his senses, like he doesn't really understand what's really going on or the implications of what he's really doing. But when Jimmy loses the money and doesn't return his phone calls and Brian goes to the bar to confront him, <clears throat> then that's when he feels pain. Um, he feels pain, of course, when um, he ends up killing Jimmy, the pain of that decision. But then after that, he kind of, you know, covers it up. So he doesn't stay with the pain long enough, right, to confess it as 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 a particular issue that he's done wrong. We look at Jesse. Jesse's um, Jesse's countenance. Remember, he's Jack cars. He's when he's in the car, he's very ego driven. But then when he's away from the car, you see his countenance. It's like he feels bad for what he has done. And um, his pain later comes when he can't leave the city clean. So then does he go through the rest of the stages of setback? And, and will he ever be able to overcome his setback is unlikely. So every time he conducts a drug run, he's going to be in pain and he's going to be in a perpetual setback until he is blood out. Sammy, Sammy's pain is obvious that um, Sammy will always remember that he's the one who got his friend into the last carjacking that resulted in, in Brian dying and um, Jesse having to become a drug runner. That is his forever pain for Sammy, that he, he he didn't have to initiate. He should have just left him, let his friend leave. If anything, if you let the friend leave, you may be able to come to where the friend is. But if you don't let the friend leave, you end up leave, you end up losing the friend, which actually happens. So his pain is going to be perpetual because the friend that he grew up with and went to school with, he'll never be able to see again. And then Jimmy's uh, pain uh, Jimmy's pain is, to me, is uh, finding a mark in order to accomplish whatever it is he's trying to accomplish, and then it turning out bad. And we don't know the history of Jimmy um, engaging as a con man, but when you look at his image and how his face is, his his stare at um, Brian, that's not a stare that started with Brian. That's a stare that's been around for a long time. So that means that Jimmy had more than enough time to make changes in his life before this last uh, painful situation where he is actually being killed. So he, he no longer can feel the pain. See, there are ev there's <clears throat> areas of pain that you get before you get to the last pain that is the last one. And the last one leads to death, you know, so to speak. So... You mean to tell me that Jimmy never felt bad somewhere on his journey about um, engaging in drug dealing or conning people or marking people or something like that? He never felt bad about that? And you don't start that as an adult. You've been doing something like that since your childhood. That's why you see Jesse and Sammy, the the two teens, that's, um, that's an implication that a lot of stuff happened from the time you were young. Your environment shapes you, but you make decisions as well. And so Jimmy has lived with himself for a long time for him to make make better decisions in the same way as Brian. So pain reminds you that you have done something wrong, you have made the wrong move, and you need to undergo a process to let the pain ride itself out. And that's not going to happen if you're dead, though. So correction, the purpose of correction is to get you back on the original path set for you or you set for yourself. Correction is defined as the returning of something to its former place or condition. So how were Brian, Jesse, and Sammy, and Jimmy corrected? I guess the question should be, how should they have been corrected? 
or how could they have been corrected? So I'm going to take it from that particular vantage point, right? Um, and then look at the actual question that you see on the screen here. So they should have been corrected, Brian, in terms of um, once the 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 uh, the five hundred to five thousand piqued his interest, made him even more curious. But once he said, "I can't afford it," the hundred thousand dollars, then that should have kept him home, and then he would have been able to go through a correction process, uh, saying to himself, "It's not a good idea to gamble. I need to find a better way. Maybe continue to look for work." That should have been his correction. Jesse's correction should have been not to necessarily leave home, but if you're not gonna go to school or community college, go get a job, right? You can say the same of Sammy, go get a job. You don't need to jack cars for money or anything like that, just go get a job, right? The same can be for Jimmy, go get a job. Jimmy was at his job, but Jimmy was trying to be some baller as some sort of wannabe drug dealer when he was really stacked. It would have been better for him to just continue to work, save his money and do something and do some other business venture. He was trying to be in business or something that lets you know that 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 business wasn't his business. So that's what they should have done. Right. So then if we look at the purpose of correction uh, to get you back on the original path set for you or you set for yourself and returning to a former place or condition, well, if they if they would have been corrected, um, when would have been the best time for them to be corrected? Uh, for Brian, um, not return to the club, of course. Um, but correction could have come much earlier as well. Um, if he would have gone home the first time and 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 he and the wife could have sat down at the uh, table, put on a pot of coffee and talked this thing out, right? Um, instead of focusing on the Cancer Society donation, focus on how we're going to make it for the next six months and then uh, continue to go out and look for work. Uh, but by the time you get to the end of the movie and Brian, Jesse and Sammy are sitting in a plane, uh, their correction comes from the drug dealer. And it's the drug dealer who, who gives them three options. But in some ways, Brian has to make the choice and it, it's almost like self-correcting. And he, he had kind of prophesied in a little bit, a little bit when he was, um, in the kids room saying he would probably be dead in a couple hours. And so uh, Brian gets to the end of life and he can't be corrected. Now, in that moment before his death, uh, well, let's go back. I know, I know where he could have been corrected. He was, he was corrected in his thinking. Um, when he was in the kids room and he was talking to Jesse and he was talking about the purpose of life is to uh, to be happy and to do right. That's where his correction is. So yeah, I take that back. For Brian, that's where his correction is. It's like it, it come to him, but he knows he's gonna die. He may not know for certain until the to the thing actually happens, but he's not gonna be able to fulfill that revelation that he gets while sitting in the kids' room. That the purpose of life is to uh, to be happy and do what's right. Okay. Uh, so let's stay in the uh, kids' room. For Jesse, uh, he says, I keep getting myself into these things. That's that's the beginning of him sort of grieving over his decision-making, that he shouldn't have been doing all the stuff that he's been doing. So that's corrected in his understanding. But in the end, while he's in the plane, he's not going to be able to fulfill that corrected um, um, understanding because he's just got himself into the ultimate thing, which is now becoming a drug runner. Sammy uh, is saying basically 
to uh, to Jesse that you don't have a plan. And Sammy's dialogue is based upon what Jesse is doing. So Sammy doesn't have any real true dialogue other than saying to Jesse, you need a plan or saying to Jesse, let's enjoy this money, All right? Let's enjoy this. And then later in the limo, we're rich. But how is he corrected? It's hard to say because he ends up leaving in the end and he's really not the main, he's part of the narrative plot. But again, his thinking depends upon, is predicated uh, on what Jesse is thinking. So he responds to Jesse. And so his correction could be that he needs to be a, a, a thinking individual, a single thinking individual, because he he goes this, he does this back and forth. Okay, I don't think this is right to do, but then he turns around and does exactly the thing that he doesn't think it is right to do. Jimmy is not really corrected. Jimmy to me doesn't honestly learn anything. Jimmy pulls out a gun and Jimmy, uh, that's not the first time that Jimmy has pulled out a gun. So Jimmy believes that pulling out a gun is going to solve the problem. So there's no correction. Uh, he's not interested in getting on the uh, original path. And in some ways, the narrative, the film shuts him down because it's like it knows that he's not going to be correct. He's not going to change. He's not going to change his thinking. Because by the time you get to the point where you're using a gun, you should you should have a better thinking about things, but he's not interested in having a better thinking. So recovery, to recover is to return to a state of health, mind, and strength. Without soundness of mind, it would be difficult to accomplish or achieve anything. And then how did Brian, Jesse, and Sammy, and Jimmy recover? And so I want to make a, a quick note of the difference between accomplish and achieve. Accomplish is, is connected to success, immediate success, levels of success. So you complete something, you are successful, and you keep moving up the ladder, right? Achieve means that you, it um, well, accomplish requires self-control. You, you managing momentary impulses, right? To, to accomplish the thing you, you are trying to accomplish. Achieve is really connected to grit and that, you, you, your attempt is to solve this one problem and it may take you years, decades, or your lifetime, right? So uh, accomplish and achieve are two different things. So then when you connect it to recovery, uh, you are saying, well, I am suggesting that there was a larger vision in mind that you got distracted, but now you have an opportunity to get back on the right path to recover yourself, right? To return to a state of health and mind and strength. That had Brian just come home and sat down and stayed with the newspaper or went to visit a headhunter, that he would have eventually recovered maybe after six months, right? Uh, he could have leveraged the house, he was able to get $100,000 out of his portfolio. So he had more than enough money to uh, to make a better decision, um, but he allowed himself to be pulled into Jimmy's mess. So, so he never recovered because he dies in the end. The, the money, he has the tool of recovery in the $100,000, but he gives that, he gives over his life savings or a portion of, of the life savings from the investment portfolio to a con. And then the con loses the money. And so um, uh, he can't recover from that. He can't take much more out of his portfolio because it's going to uh, send up a warning signal to the bank as well as to the IRS. So he's stuck. So he never recovers. Jesse, Jesse never really recovers, right? Uh, because he's going to become a drug runner. We don't know if Sammy recovers. He recovers in the sense that he, he returns to his life and he was he's able to keep his life. But we don't know what his uh, lifespan is going to turn into. We don't know if he's going to be so mad that, at the fact that he had to let his friend go and go into a life of crime. Uh, he does come from a rich background so he has much has many more advantages right 
But it's funny how the person who comes from the rich uh, background is so willing to burn their own house as well, right? So Sammy, we can understand Sammy being uh, uh, acting out in his childish behavior, right? Uh, childlike behavior, but we don't understand how Brian can do the same thing. So Sammy, Sammy's recovery really depends on uh, him stepping up as an individual and taking responsibility. See, he was absolved of responsibility when the drug dealer let him go, or when, or when um, um, Brian makes the decision to let Sammy go. He was absolved of the responsibility. He got to leave. He got to walk out. But he's going to remember the. Um, He's going to remember the gunshot. He's going to remember his friend. He's going to remember the whole exercise. Then Jimmy doesn't recover again because he's basically dead. Because he never recovered the money. He never recovered the deal. He never recovered um, his state of mind. He's running from what's supposed to be his business, right? If that's his business, why couldn't he leverage... Um, the uh, the business as collateral to get a hundred thousand dollars like i said that wasn't his business so he never recovers once he once uh his punishment is basically that death so he doesn't go through the rest of the stages of setback restoration restoration requires mentorship men, and mentorship is predicated on learning from someone who has walked out the process so how were brian jesse and sammy and Jimmy restored. And so if we're looking at it from the lens of mentorship, men, uh, we don't see anyone really mentoring Brian. Remember, he is the director of sales, but we don't see his boss. And we don't see really the people up under him. So when he leaves with his box, he leaves just with his box. Um, the only um, person that we might see mentoring him uh, is is a phone call that he makes to his investment portfolio management uh, manager. So that might be a little bit of mentorship in him in, in the manager telling him that he can't take too much money out, right? Uh, so he's setting limits. Mentors help to set limits, set boundaries, help, help you to guide and navigate through those limits and boundaries. So that might be something that you can think of. And he should have honestly stayed on the phone with, with the bank manager with the um, investment portfolio manager. He should have stayed on the phone with him and got even more mentorship, right? He might not have gone into the bar. He might not, he might have driven off. He might have said, uh, he could have said, let me come into the office and let's talk. And then that would have been a uh, um, a way to get off the path that, that was going to lead to destruction in the end and get back on the path where he's trying to make life work in a right way, in a clean way. Jesse, Jesse is kind of mentored uh, by Brian in the kids room, although Jesse is tied up, you know, uh, chained up, but he is kind of mis mentored. Um, they kind of, you know, sort of mirror each other. And it's Brian who tells Jesse that, that he still needs a plan, that, that that's not a plan. And then uh, somehow the situation brings out of Jesse this idea of wanting to have a business, things like that. And so Jesse kind of also mentors himself when you think about it. He said, he says out of his soul, really, I always get myself into these things. Why do I always get myself into these things? And that's sort of like self-mentoring so that you can go through a process of reflecting on that and then moving forward. But he doesn't get the opportunity because the path requires that you uh, pay for your mistake, uh, that he doesn't get a chance to walk out of the plane and uh, receive further mentoring and learn from it, right? That the mentoring had he just decided to go to community college, finish high school or get a GED and then go to community college, he would have been able to receive the mentoring through coursework, completing coursework, and then be able to create his own business. No, he, the allure of money and the allure of making hasty decisions is what sort of um, put him in the predicament that, that he's in at the end of the movie. Sammy um, 
is not really mentored by Jesse. Sammy um, does have some kind of a conscience about him, but he doesn't let it stay long enough uh, in his mind. He jumps into the car and into the car that Jesse just jacked. So like I said, if he's so bothered by this, then he shouldn't get into the car. And then Jimmy, of course, remember, he's not restored. He's, in fact, he's buried by Brian. So again, he never goes through the rest of the uh, stages of setback. To advance, which is the last stage of setback, is to move forward in a purposeful way and make or cause progress. Advancing is a forward and continuous movement. How did Brian, Jesse, and Sammy, and Jimmy advance? So if we look at Jimmy, he didn't advance. Brian, you know, Brian in some ways kind of advances in the end uh, while he's sitting in a plane and he's forced to make a focused decision. Now it's gonna to lead to his death, but and 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 essentially he's he's moving forward into death but for the first time in the movie he makes a focused um decision and saying that sammy can leave basically jessica can stay and then of course by default brian is killed right um jesse um moves forward in a false way that whereas he wouldn't get a job and stop carjacking now he basically has a job but he has to leave live his life unclean he's a drug dealer or he's going to become a drug dealer but it's it's a false sense of advancing and so and that movement has to be forward and continuous even though he's even though uh he's really in a setback a perpetual setback until blood out Sammy is uh, moving forward, but he's psychologically damaged. He's really in a spell. Um, um, he's going to need counseling, but he can't talk about the problem, right? Uh, he's putting up the flyers, but he's really not supposed to tell anybody about what happened to Jesse. So... He's basically, it's funny how we don't see the black uh, SUV, uh, SUV following Sammy, but we see it following Brian's wife in, at the end. And we see the SUV, you know, following all of them uh, throughout the movie, but we don't see him following Sammy, which says something about the, the economic status, right, of, of Sammy. He's rich, right? And so uh, that's interesting to me that we don't see uh, that happening. When he had a direct connection to the situation, to the context, and not the wife. And then, of course, Jimmy doesn't advance because Jimmy died at punishment level. So in concluding this film analysis and applying the uh, stages of setback, what can we learn from Brian's Jesse's and Sammy's and Jimmy's setbacks. <sighs> you know, that's a big side that I just gave. And the if we look at the totality of the whole film and all of the characters and their development, there's only really one conclusion. Work. That uh you can alleviate a lot of problems in your life if you go and work on a job. You wouldn't have to go to prison for drug dealing if you just chose to work on a job. That Brian could have stayed, his wife was already gone on a trip and uh, that gave him enough time to plan a different type of uh, strategy. And he knows he knows as a 100% responsible grown individual that he has to work. So then if he knows that, why is he engaging any gambling, hasty decision-making type of opportunities? Jesse and Sammy taking together um, somebody in their lives is not encouraging them on the right path. Even Sammy should not be hanging out with a person who carjacks cars. I don't care if it's his friend or not. 
So why isn't his his? It seems like Sammy um, Sammy's parents are encouraging him in, into college because it is on his tongue. And then Jesse counters that and uh, and says that you know Sammy is rich and and of, and of course he can be able to go to college and things like that. And that Jesse is sort of offended at the idea that he won't be able to go directly to a university, I guess. And so he sets the fire to college, the community college brochure. But Jesse, we find out later in the kids' room when he's uh, stuck and tied up, that he won't even finish high school. So uh, what we can learn from the setbacks of uh, Jesse and Sammy, finish school, go get a job as a teenager, go to college. It's, it's simple. I tell my students all the time, the easiest thing that you can do living in your parents' house is to, to get out your studies. Maybe have a little part-time job, but that's the easiest thing to do because once you leave, you have the responsibilities of an adult. And both of them are trying to be an adult before their time. And so Jimmy is not a true adult because he's operating in a childlike uh, understanding. You can see why Jesse and Sammy are the way they are because they're still adolescent, you know. You don't really mature in your brain until about 20s or something. And so we can see that. But Jimmy's been around for a long time. So has Brian. And they should have been better examples. Jesse and Sammy should not have had, uh, should not, well, I don't know if I want to go that route. Um, but they, sh Brian and Jimmy just should have been better examples. They would not have had to uh, navigate life with Brian if Brian wasn't on the uh, wrong path. Brian, just as much as uh, shaped the setbacks, uh, as Jimmy uh, shaped the setbacks as well. And so, but still, if you look at just Jesse and Sammy alone, they shouldn't be going around jacking cars either. That they created their own setbacks in jacking cars. And the, and the setback is, is that they're not willing to work. They are willing to skip ahead and get money before the time and call that success. And that's not success. That's stealing. And, and as soon as they make the decision to steal the cars or carjack the cars and abandon them, and steal the money and spend all the money and th they have created their setback. So they they have no other choice but to go through the stages of setback, right? Because they missed their opportunities and Brian and Jimmy, of course. So this is a interesting film. Uh, I like press very much because it's, it's, it's about life and the pressing that we feel in our individual lives. And hopefully you were able to learn something, gain insight from this film al uh, analysis. Thank you for listening. All right, so hopefully you were able to gain some insight from this lecture. Uh, please like, subscribe, and visit. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. You can visit my website, um, reginawhitefavors.com. You can always send me an email. Uh, please purchase the book when it comes out. It's going to come out approximately uh, August 2021. I needed to make some changes to it and do some final editing. So the book title is Overcoming Setback, Five Keys for Entering and Exiting Correction. Thank you for listening to this audio. Have a great day.